So you cheated. You son of a. You ate too many carbohydrates, and now you feel like shh. Don't worry. All is not lost. You can still make it. Welcome, my name is Seem, and in this video I'm going to explain you how to get back into ketosis after a cheat meal. I'll be back. As soon as possible, because you want to start using those ketones and fat for fuel again. Before you do anything, you have to make sure that you're not gonna feel shameful about it. Of course, you may get some guilt and you start to hate yourself. What an idiot! Weak-willed piece of garbage. You are stupid. This is one of the worst things you could do because shame, guilt, remorsefulness, apathy, resentfulness, they're the worst kind of emotions because they keep you in this low energy state of pity. Stop it! It's gonna cause more self-loathe and negativity. And you don't ever want to focus your brain on that because it's going to start recreating those same feelings in the future. Instead, you have to take it as an opportunity to practice some anti-fragility and carefreeness. Chill out, dickwad. You can cause a whole lot of damage to your body with cheat meals. Eating 10,000 calories in one sitting can definitely jeopardize an entire week's work of fat loss. However, your mindset could never be made lesser because of this if you decide to see the right perspective. You simply say to yourself that I'm anti-fragile. I can use those calories for building muscle, having more energy, boosting my metabolism and practicing getting off the routine as well. So no matter the situation, you can still benefit from it. However, you still have to do some damage control. So here's what you do to get into ketosis as soon as possible. After you wake up in the morning, you have to set aside the cheat meal completely and focus back on your goals. Don't make any false presumptions based on how you look or what the scale tells you because it's more than likely that if you gained a ton of weight, then it's probably just water weight and sodium bloating. You want to get back on track with your right eating habits. Instead of having breakfast or even a second round of cheat meals, you should do some intermittent fasting instead. I, I can't just eat my wife. Your body is already topped off with glycogen and the key thing for producing ketones again is glycogen depletion. It's not necessary to deplete your muscle glycogen to get into ketosis and you actually shouldn't want to do it because you want to be using it during workouts. One of the biggest questions I get is should you fast to get back into ketosis? At this point I wouldn't recommend you to fast for any longer than 16 to 24 hours because your body is still more susceptible to gluconeogenesis. <laughs> Did you just say the F word? Okay, the thing is, you got kicked out of ketosis. This is gonna make your body's primary fuel source glucose again. And your body's gonna demand for some more carbohydrates. And your muscles aren't ready to use ketones again. But because you wanna get into ketosis, you're not gonna be eating those carbs. And this may cause some muscle loss because of that. If you were to be in full ketosis, then you would avoid this muscle loss completely because ketones are protein sparing. But at the moment, you want to give your body some ketones so you would have some sort of energy. So you would want to fast for about 16 to 24 hours the day after your cheat meal to deplete your liver glycogen and establish ketosis faster. Exercise is also a great way to support this process. It's a great idea to schedule your heavier and more intense workout sessions for the day after your cheat meals because you have more energy to push yourself. If you ate some carbohydrates without a ton of extra fat and sodium, which is the healthier way of doing it, then you're going to have an amazing pump and vascularity. This can be used to your advantage, but like I said, you don't need to deplete your muscle glycogen again. Instead, focus on lifting heavier weights and more explosive movements so that you could build more strength and direct that glycogen into stimulating muscle growth. Cardio in a fasted state is perfect for liver glycogen depletion and you should consider doing it in the morning so that you could get into ketosis as soon as possible. High intensity exercise is also shown to be more effective for boosting fat loss and ketosis. So adding a HIIT session or Tabata after your resistance training workout is a great idea. Definitely take advantage of this state where you're topped off with glycogen. Stop being a baby. But what are some other things that you can consume to promote ketone production? Black coffee has caffeine that makes you burn more fat and gives you more energy. It helps to produce ketone bodies and stimulates autophagy to some degree as well, which makes it the perfect drink for fasting. Green tea has similar effects, but it also contains EGCG, which is a type of polyphenol that reduces inflammation and protects against cancer. Drinking green tea is a good idea because you need all the help you can get 
to keep your brain fog in check after having this carb up meal. It's not a tumor! I recommend you to drink some water with pink rock salt for balancing your electrolytes again. It also reduces the adrenal stress of fasting and it prevents the keto flu. Apple cider vinegar is going to lower your blood sugar, improve digestion and make you produce more ketone bodies. It also has potassium which you need because after a cheat meal you may potentially get some muscle cramps. Again, the perfect drink for every day. Anti-inflammatory compounds like ginger, turmeric, cinnamon, black pepper, cayenne pepper are amazing for fighting that bloated feeling and healing the damage. Exogenous ketones are also a very effective way of giving yourself the ketogenic feel. They're gonna elevate your blood ketones, which can help your liver's own endogenous production of ketones. They also have many added electrolytes, and the brand I'm currently using is Perfect Keto. You can use the code SEAMLAND to get a minus 20% discount on all their beta hydroxybutyrate salts and MCT oil powders. Now let's talk about the food that you're gonna eat. What food should you eat after the cheat meal? Like I said, the day afterwards you wanna do intermittent fasting and limit your food consumption to only one meal a day. That one meal should be a standard ketogenic meal with low carb vegetables, some protein and healthy fats. You wanna keep your carbs lower than usual because it's gonna help you get into ketosis faster. When it comes to protein, then you should hit your daily goal because your body isn't that resilient to catabolism yet. It's even a good idea to be consuming slightly more, maybe like 5-10% to more, to assist the transition process. Don't worry, eating more protein won't make it convert it into sugar. But at the same time, because you're out of ketosis, your body is still searching for some glucose. Knock, knock. Which again makes you more vulnerable to muscle breakdown, even in the presence of ketones. So, having some higher levels of amino acids in your bloodstream, or needing some more protein, just a little bit more, is going to protect you against this catabolism. However, glycerol from fatty acids can also be converted into glucose through gluconeogenesis. It's not necessary to consume a lot of fat to establish ketosis. The key is to deplete your liver glycogen and suppress insulin. So, you don't want to be consuming copious amounts of fat just to meet your daily calories. In fact, you would actually be better off by consuming slightly less fat because first of all, you probably ate a surplus of calories the previous day and secondly, your body isn't that adapted to using fat as a fuel source, which makes it that much easier to store it as fat and cause some other health problems. Consuming some healthy fats that produce ketones like MCT oil, coconut oil, avocados, butter and olive oil are excellent, but you should keep it moderate. Your overall calories should also be slightly lower. <laughs> What the hell am I talking about? They should be significantly lower, not just slightly, because you bastard. <laughs> if you ate any more than 500 calories above your caloric maintenance, then those calories are probably stored as fat, so you'll have a lot of free room to play with. I recommend you to have at least a 500 calorie deficit to kickstart fat loss and get back into ketosis. At the most, you would want to keep it at 700 calories, and you shouldn't go any lower than that. After the day, after the cheat meal, you want to look at how your body responded to the cheat meal and what you did afterwards. Chances are that you're gonna look flat and depleted and that's because you flushed out some glycogen again. That's fine, your body is readapting. This is where you look at your current body composition and you make your future plans based on what you see. If you're still extremely bloated and inflamed, then follow the same protocol as the day before and increase your antioxidant consumption. If you're already feeling okay and you look fine, maybe a bit of extra puffiness, which is fine, then you want to return to your normal way of eating, the ketogenic template. No matter what the case is, you should still continue eating the anti-inflammatory ketogenic staple foods. Green leafy vegetables, herbs, spices, eggs, fish, some meat, fermented foods, healthy fats. You should also continue exercising based on your goals, but still implement both resistance training as well as aerobic training to build up your mitochondrial density because becoming keto adapted is all about increasing the power of your mitochondria i'm back ketosis is an incredible metabolic state and the ketogenic diet also has many health benefits but it's not necessary to stay in ketosis year round all the time in fact you would actually be better off by occasionally dipping in and out of ketosis this is gonna boost your metabolism, prevent food intolerances and is also gonna increase your metabolic flexibility to use both carbs and fat as fuel. If you need a blueprint for starting the ketogenic diet or getting back into ketosis quickly, then you should check out my KetoFit program. It includes a 30-day meal plan with optional cheat meals, 
50 plus recipes for both keto and healthy carb foods, a 5 week workout routine and many other bonuses. But other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click the like, subscribe, the notification bell as well. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay fat, adapted, stay empowered.